Hi, Arkfield Weather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Thursday morning, December the 7th. A lot to talk about this morning. First of all, there's a batch of snow dropping south and east across Pennsylvania, about to reach the Philly metro region. Probably by 9 a.m. or so, much of the Philly metro region should be receiving some snow. And uh, all the way down into the suburbs of Baltimore, there can be some snow or ice pellets over the next couple of hours. Across the uh, southeastern part of Pennsylvania and upstate Pennsylvania, certainly a coating to an inch is possible with this batch of snow. Watch out for slippery spots. We'll talk about that uh, uh, over the next couple of minutes. And then we'll focus in on the weekend storm. It looks like a heavy rain, strong wind event is still on tap for much of the mid-Atlantic region, northeast U.S., late Sunday, Sunday night, and a good chance in many parts of the northeastern states that there will be a changeover on the back end to snow and ice, and we'll talk about that over the next few minutes as well. And this weekend storm will also produce a severe weather threat down across the deep south, places like Arkansas, even Louisiana, Mississippi, maybe even into Alabama, have a threat for severe thunderstorms, maybe even some tornadic activity. Well, let's start off by talking about the uh, current situation here. And what we'll do is we'll go to the, the current radar map right here of uh, the uh, Mid-Atlantic region of the Northeast U.S. And we're looking at uh, basically all snow at this particular time uh, north of the Mason-Dixon line. Down across Baltimore, there's some snow and ice mixed in. Much of this will stay to the north and east of the D.C. metro region, but again, the Philly metro region should be experiencing snow by uh, uh, around 9 a.m. or so, and certainly there can be a quick coating to a half inch, maybe even an inch in some spots, and you know, watch out for uh, slick spots on the roads, temperatures or are uh, at or below freezing in much of the suburbs north and west of Philadelphia as we begin the morning here. It's a quick mover. It uh, should wind down late this morning by midday, maybe even mix with rain at times towards the middle uh, part of the day. But again, watch out over the next couple hours all the way from southeastern Pennsylvania to the northeastern part of Maryland, northern suburbs of Baltimore, for example, for some snow, maybe some ice pellets, maybe even some small accumulations. Well, one model that has captured this current snow event rather well, I believe, is the HR high resolution model that NOAA has that produces weather maps on an hourly basis. It's, uh, again, a higher resolution model as compared with the GFS, for example, which is more of a larger scale, a synoptic scale type model. This is the current forecast map for uh, 7 o'clock this morning. We'll just run through on an hourly basis what this particular model has. And again, by mid-morning, pretty much all of uh, the uh, southeastern part of Pennsylvania will be uh, encompassed by some snow. And again, it can be some snow or ice pellets all the way down to Baltimore, let's say, over the next couple of hours. Quick mover. By the time we get to the middle of the day, it uh, tends to wind down and dissipate. But in terms of snowfall amounts, this is uh, the output. Uh, not a big deal, but enough that there can be some slick spots on roadways. Again, 29, 30, 31 degrees right now across some of those northern western suburbs of Philadelphia. So certainly uh, there can be a coating to as much as a half inch or even an inch in some spots over the next few hours. Again, all the way down to about Baltimore. Uh, watch out for some of the snow or ice pellets down south of the Mason-Dixon line. Most of the snow accumulations will take place north of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. Well, let's now shift gears to the weekend storm event. We've been kind of highlighting this as a, as a big-time event, and it continues to look like it'll be a, a big-time event with heavy rain and strong winds, potentially damaging winds across portions of the northeastern states, a severe weather threat down across the deep south. Accumulating snow is quite likely uh, in interior, higher elevation locations of the mid-Atlantic region, the northeast U.S., uh, areas like upstate New York, interior New England certainly can end up with several inches of snow in this late weekend 
uh, event. Again, late Sunday, Sunday night into early Monday. Wanted to start off by looking at the a couple of jet streaks in the atmosphere, both in the upper part of the atmosphere and the lower part of the atmosphere. Very healthy jet streaks, and that usually results in a strong upper level low, strong upper motion at the surface, and indeed that will be the case here. We're using the conventional run of the GFS from zero Z last night, starting off by looking way up at the top of the atmosphere, 250 millibars from Saturday morning. All of these maps, I want to start with Saturday morning. Uh, we kind of focused in on the near term a little while ago. Here is a very impressive upper level jet over the interior west as of Saturday morning. We'll just ride through quickly uh, into the day on Sunday. Here we go by Sunday morning. This is now Sunday midday. Look at this upper level jet. Very, very impressive. And depending on what quadrant of a jet streak you are located in, the upward motion can be intense. And indeed, the combination of this upper level jet and lower level jet that we'll see in a moment will contribute to very, very significant upward motion across, for example, the Mid Atlantic region of the Northeast US, leading to a, a lot of precipitation. In this case, heavy rain initially across the I-95 corridor region late sat, uh, Sunday into Sunday night. And again, that can change over to snow in the back end, maybe all the way down to not too far to the north and west of the immediate I-95 corridor region. Let's go out a little bit farther in time and just take a look at this. Healthy, healthy jet streak, a lot of upper motion at this time across the mid-Atlantic region. This is in the upper part of the atmosphere. We'll go out a little bit farther in time all the way to Monday morning. Certainly, one of the ingredients uh, that is clear here is an upper level jet streak. Well, now let's take a look at the lower level. We're looking at the 850 millibar level. This is a few thousand feet above the ground. Uh, and uh, this is important parameter to look at because it really uh, uh, helps to predict uh, potentially damaging wind gusts. If you have a very strong upper, uh, lower level jet streak at that 850 millibar level, that certainly can increase the chances for some damaging wind gusts down at the surface level. All you need is a little bit of a, uh, a momentum transfer from a few thousand feet down to the ground level, which can happen, for example, in thunderstorms. And uh, you can have some potentially damaging wind gusts down at the ground level. Here, here we are again, starting off with Saturday morning. This is uh, the Saturday morning forecast map from the zero Z GFS 850 millibar winds and watch what happens here first of all it starts to kind of show up let me go back here down here across the Tennessee Valley uh, late Saturday Saturday night again there's the chance for severe weather down across the deep south with this weekend system uh, Saturday Saturday night into Sunday time frame and that intensifies dramatically here this lower level jet streak here we are by midday on Sunday and again uh, this increases the chance for some very strong winds along the I-95 corridor all the way to the coast late Sunday Sunday night time frame will go out a little bit farther in time and look at that very very strong low level winds not too far above the ground level and again this enhances the chance for some uh, potentially damaging wind gusts, especially along coastal sections, late Sunday, Sunday night time frame. This is the Sunday evening forecast map, and it just explodes in intensity here by the time we get to about midnight Sunday night, going into early Monday morning. Again, enhancing the chance for some damaging wind gusts, places like uh, eastern New England, all the way up into the southeastern part of Canada, Cape Cod, eastern Maine, potential damaging wind gusts with this particular system. We'll wrap up with the Monday morning forecast map right here, that lower level jet streak. So we have uh, multiple jet streaks here, one certainly strong in the upper levels, one certainly strong down in the lower levels, all aiding in what is expected to be a, a pretty powerful storm this weekend. Well, let's wrap up with the surface forecast maps of uh, the Zero Z GFS model run. Again, this is starting with Saturday morning's forecast map here. We're starting to see uh, some rain across the Tennessee Valley, the Mississippi Valley region. And uh, notice the isobar pattern here out ahead of this low and strong cold front. You have a strong fetch of air from the southwest to the northeast that pumps in milder air, not only uh, initially over the Ohio Valley, but eventually over the eastern seaboard as well. Going a little bit farther in time Saturday, 
into Saturday uh, evening, late evening now. This is when severe weather is a threat. Again, really anywhere from Louisiana, Arkansas, across uh, Mississippi, Alabama, even into Tennessee, there can be some severe thunderstorm activity late Saturday, Saturday night, and unfortunately that severe weather threat includes the possibility of tornadoes. This is an intensifying low pressure area with multiple strong jet streaks in the atmosphere. All will be contributing to strong upward motion. All will be contributing to very uh, unstable atmospheric conditions here. Now let's go out a little bit farther in time. And by the time we get to midday on Sunday, uh, you'll have a very strong cold frontal system right in this region right here at this particular time. Low pressure right along that frontal boundary zone. And with the uh, support in the upper part of the atmosphere by those jet streaks, by a very strong upper level low, this low will intensify. Notice some blue starting to show up here. Get a kind of a quick transition to snow or ice behind the cold front system, interior mid-Atlantic region, let's say western Pennsylvania, for example, uh, interior northeast U.S., let's say upstate, for example. And here we go all the way out into uh, the late evening hours, maybe midnight hour on Sunday night going into early Monday morning. Heavy rain along the coast at this time, and again, a quick transition to some snow, perhaps ice across central Pennsylvania, upstate New York, where there can be several inches of snow by the time we get to Monday morning. Even a chance that this cold air rushes in enough to the south and east that there's a brief changeover to snow or ice not too far to the north and west of the immediate I-95 corridor region late Sunday night. And again, we talked uh, earlier about the uh, chance for potentially damaging winds, especially along coastal sections, let's say from New Jersey up across New England and, and, and uh, especially across eastern New England, Cape Cod, eastern Maine. We have that very strong and intensifying low-level jet. You can see right here tight pressure gradient pattern. So uh, this weakened storm system certainly has a wide-ranging impact from severe weather down across the deep south to heavy rain, strong, and potentially damaging winds northeast U.S., mid-Atlantic region. Heavy rainfall, of course, and strong thunderstorms may make their way all the way into the eastern seaboard uh, late Sunday into Sunday night. And on the backside, on the, uh, after the passage of that cold front, and you'll know when it passes, there can be that changeover to snow and ice with several inches possible, maybe even upstate Pennsylvania, but certainly upstate New York, interior New England will go out a little farther in time. And here we go, that accumulating snow at this time across Vermont, New Hampshire, upstate New York. This is by early Monday morning and just tremendous rainfall right along the East Coast. And again, still those very strong winds. Look at this pressure gradient pattern here, these black lines. Our isobars represent lines of equal pressure. The tighter they are, the stronger the winds at the surface. And this is a very impressive here, this far out. Uh, and we know it's supported by that strong low-level jet. A little farther in time, it finally pushes into southeastern Canada by midday on Monday. Cold air encompasses uh, much of the eastern third of the nation for much of the first half of next week. So in the immediate term, some snow across eastern Pennsylvania, all the way down into northeastern Maryland, maybe even a coating to a half inch or an inch or so. Watch out for slick spots. All that winds down by midday or early afternoon. And then the big weekend storm event that will have wide-ranging impacts from the potential severe weather down in the deep south, uh, including, unfortunately, the threat of isolated tornadoes. Heavy rain, strong, and potentially damaging winds, mid-Atlantic, northeast U.S., and a changeover to snow and ice on the backside of that frontal system uh, with accumulating snow, likely, upstate PA, upstate New York, interior New England, and maybe, maybe change over to snow or ice uh, for a brief time all the way into or just northwest of the immediate I-95 car region. That would be late Sunday night uh, into early Monday morning. And basically... Uh, chilly conditions for the first half of next week across the eastern third of the nation. That's it for now for ArcfieldWeather.com. This has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.